Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here and it's time again for another coloring book challenge by professional artists. I've done I think four of these so far and if you wanna catch up, I'll link the playlist here, but let's get straight to this one. I am back using the Color Noir coloring book and it is linked in the description if you'd like to color along with me. By the way, if you do, feel free to tag me on Instagram, but look at all these beautiful illustrations and today I will go for this one. It's given me slayage. You know the makeup needs to come correct. I'm feeling a bold eyeshadow look and I'm so excited for this. But before I start, here is our lady from last time. I was going for someone with albinism and I really think I missed the mark, but I will keep trying. You know, I can be a professional artist at one thing because that's all I've known and practiced forever, but completely flop when I try something new. <laughs> and that's cool, we're all learning together. So if you wanna hear my thoughts through this one, feel free to catch up on that video after this one but I'm going to name this beauty Lyora Camille. Lyora means light and I love that name for her so shout out to you Corey and Libby and let's get on with today's colouring. I'm going to transfer the sketch lines into my sketchbook as usual and I'll be using a graphite transfer sheet. So I'm putting it below my line work so that once I trace over all of the lines will appear in my sketchbook and the reason I do this and I don't just colour on this paper is because this is just crap printer paper and I want to be able to use all of my markers and all of my pencils as usual. By the way I'll link all my supplies down below if you're interested in everything I use and if you don't have a graphite transfer sheet just feel free to shade the back using a pencil or some chalk and you can still create a good transfer but i will tell you this graphite transfer sheet is so good you can reuse it i don't know how many times i've reused it because i've really dealt with this one but it stays understanding the assignment now this transfer bit is probably one of the most tedious parts because depending on how difficult or how detailed your sketch is, you are going to be there for time. And you just have to be patient, drawing every single line you see because there is no shortcut. But I am excited for braids today. It has been a minute. These edges, however, <laughs> it's supposed to be baby hair, but they're looking grown. It's giving me full blown adult. So we're going to have to fix that later. But can we just get into this face? Talk about eyebrows on fleek. <laughs> we in 2016 but you know what it's given me it's given me you just got your makeup done by a makeup artist and you're posing for the picture or the video that's going on their instagram i am so excited she's definitely screaming full glam i mean look at the lashes if you can't tell i love makeup and you probably can't tell <laughs> because i don't show that on my channel at all but one thing I love more than putting makeup on my own face is actually drawing and colouring makeup. So I am excited for this one. Even the dress is giving me formal, like sis is going for a wedding and whew, I think this is going to be a good one. But first, let's look at the sketch. And she's looking good. The only thing is, the lines have come out super dark, so I definitely need to get this lighter. And I don't know for you lot that are always shouting, needed eraser, this and that, because it did not do a singular thing. I tried it. So I'm back to my trusted eraser. At least I know it's going to do something. Now it's time to colour. I'm going to do a marker base and then colouring pencils for all of the details and I'm using my Ohuhu brush markers and first I'll tell you I am feeling a purple look for her and I'm sure some of you will be thinking another purple and yes <laughs> another purple by the way purple is not my favorite color but I'm just envisioning you know a purple matte eyeshadow look and I'm so sorry but I have to give it to her Maybe in the future, I'll try another one of these coloring book things with, you know, a sage green or a random pastel color or some earthy tones. But today it will be purple, I'm sorry. And for her skin, I'm going into this skin tone set. And I'm feeling dark skinned, so yeah, less color. Diving straight into the deep end with the purple eyes. I just want that base colour for her eyeshadow and for her skin. I've gone straight in with the dark brown. Something about me is I'm not going to be dilly dallying. If this is the colour I'm going to put, let's just go straight in. And it is a little bit nerve wracking like seeing all of the whites of the page. And I will say, I know she looks crazy right now, but say it with me. Trust the process. I believe, I hope, <laughs> she will come out good. But I'm just trying to lay the colors down. Think of this step as foundation building. So don't worry about blending, don't worry about the details, just shop with the colors somewhere. 
and I'm trying to follow the shape of the part of the face that I'm colouring. So I'm not just colouring in one direction. And now that I've coloured over all of the edges, <laughs> let's ignore how wham her forehead is looking. But I hope all will be well when the edges finally return. And yeah, just putting in the brows, lashes, and I'm feeling like this might be getting somewhere. I've put this random colour for her lips for now. And I'm thinking of going for like a glossy natural lip combo. Like the one I did in my crayons video, if you guys saw that one. I mean, don't leave this video to see it, <laughs> but watch it after this one. And now for the dress. I have all this space and I'm thinking of making my own Ankara print pattern. And I'm thinking of purple for the main base of the whole thing. But I want a different colour like this peach for some sort of pattern. So I'm going for these flower shapes. And I especially want it to be random and not to match up for this top bit because you know they gathered different bits of the fabric to you know make this cool style. So I'm just going around the outer edge of the flower shape and filling in most of this dress with the purple colour. And once again I don't know why I do this to myself. This marker has a smaller bullet nib end <laughs> but here I am using the brush marker side as usual because apparently I'm brave, <laughs> apparently I have no fear. But now that it's all filled in, I'm finishing the pattern with these black circles. And while I'm here, let's colour in the arms. So I've gone for this two-tone look because many black people suffer with hyperpigmentation, which is where some parts of your skin are darker than some other parts. So the insides, like the chest and the inside of the arm, are generally lighter than the outer edges. And to be honest, I should have done a better job filling this in because it's just rough, no rhyme or reason, no vibes. Let's hope the colour and pencil process can save this. And now for the braids. I always do a simple technique when colouring hair, which is to go in with a mid-tone kind of colour and then go in with some highlights and then finally the shadows. For braids, I just like to do a simple technique of outlining around all of the braids. So I'm just going around the basic shape and then I'm filling it in. So did I have to outline? Maybe not. But you might not be able to tell on camera, but I can kind of see where I'd outline first. You know how where a marker overlaps is slightly darker? It's not that obvious, but it might help you if you are doing this. But yeah, we got there in the end. The marker base is completely done and now let's pick our pencils. I'm using the Prismacolor Premier pencils and just picking some of the colours I think I'll need. I will dip back into the pencils as I feel like it. But for now, I think we're good to give our girls some detail. The first thing I feel like I should attack are the eyes and that's simply because I mean if you're a regular subscriber you know I love to start with the eyes regardless <laughs> but in this particular illustration it's absolutely the focal point I think that and the lips but if the eye makeup is dead then the whole thing will be a wrap so I'm just trying to blend the eyeshadow you know putting in those transitionary colours and I know you guys did not come here for a makeup tutorial <laughs> but I'm just trying to blend this and create a makeup look like I would in real life. I will come back to the eyes later but the skin needs to make sense. I feel like this Prismacolor set has a massive limitation and I find this out each time I try to do some more colouring with it because where are the non-ashy light browns? Oh that's right, they don't exist. So I kind of struggled. Actually I don't want to say I struggled because it was actually fine in the end but I just had to figure out this technique which was to put down this super light colour for the under eye area and I used this light yellow slash peach slash beige and then I'm going in with the browns and all of that to blend. So layering these two colours just then helps me to get to that colour that I'm missing. And the browns allows it to be toned down a little bit. But let me tell you, I am going for a super bright highlight because I'm going for that airbrushed makeup look. Like she paid good money for this beat. You know, the bright under eye, sharp contour, bronze to the gods. That is the vibe I'm going for today.
for the lips i'm just trying to get the right tone that would match her skin color and i'm also trying to find the right shade of pink for the bottom lip but also that brown outline like she used you know mac chestnut i think that will look really cute if it comes together not gonna lie her forehead is distracting me a bit too much <laughs> so let's quickly jump to the hair and fix it with some baby hair and also this hairstyle is like cornrows with loose braids at the back shout out to you if you know what i'm talking about <laughs> but the hair on the scalp so we need it to go kind of perpendicular into each of the braids And for the actual plait, I'm using this peach colour and I don't think the colour matters too much. I just grabbed the closest, lightest colour I already had out. But you could also use a white or a light grey, light yellow, really anything light. But I'm basically following the shape of the braid. So I'm looking at the line work again and I'm trying to follow the vision of this piece. And yeah, this is probably the longest part for the braids. Just trying to get all of the details in might take a minute, but put some music in the background, put on a podcast, put on one of my videos and, <laughs> and the time really will fly by. I'll be back to finish it and the face as well, but I'm going to tackle the bottom part of the piece and I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> you regular subscribers know that the face for me is what brings me the most joy with each of my drawings. So drawing clothes, doing chest, arm, none of that is fun for me. But it's like, I can't leave the drawing incomplete. Who's gonna do it for me? So for the clothes, I'm just trying to add some fun patterns, really matching this Ankara print style that I've started. <laughs> Just adding a little bit of shadowing, putting a bit of highlights. Just trying to fake texture. Let's just get something together quickly. And for the arms, I'm just trying to blend it, but I kind of regret rushing it, especially the initial marker that I messed up. I'm just trying to save it a little bit. But like I said, I don't think the Prismacolors had the right colors to help me. So it was a little bit of firefighting. But you know what we can't do in this life? We can't and shan't come and die. So the arm is gonna get whatever the arm gets today. Our finishing touches for the skin are the highlight areas. So we have the inner corner highlight, a little bit of glow from the cheek, the popping lip gloss. And you know, we will blend it out, but like I said, I want this to look like she sat in the makeup artist chair. You know, everything is still glowing and popping like the makeup artist intended. She's ready to attend this wedding. I am here for all of this. I really forgot about how higgy and haggard I left the lashes, but I'm just going in with a fine liner just to add, you know, some detail to that. And someone asked me what higgy and haggard means. <laughs> I thought the context would explain. I mean, I first heard this from this Nigerian politician and I don't know what it means, <laughs> but the context I use it in is just something looking a little bit nonsense, a little bit one kind, a little bit not quite <laughs> as it should be looking. That's the context I use it in. It might be wrong, but Every time I say it's looking a bit higgy haggard, it's just not, it's just not given what y'all said I should have gave. But back to the hair quickly, the final step is just to blend out the edges of the shine that we put in with the pencils. And for this, I'm just using a dark grey marker. I sometimes come back in with the black marker as well. By the way, I didn't use a black for the base, I used a dark brown for the base.
And yes, I really came to the other side of the table to finish this up, but sis is complete. Look at her next to the line work. I am so here for this. I love how her makeup turned out and I love how looking at the line work, you couldn't really imagine what she would come out like. But we've been able to give her this look, this personality, this story, like she's on her way to a wedding. And did I subconsciously get inspiration from myself? <laughs> this was a wedding a few years ago that I attended and I promise you I did not do this on purpose, but that's over on my personal Instagram if you wanna see my face. But yeah, let me know what we should name this beautiful lady down in the comments and give this video a thumbs up if you're loving the series. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.